perspectives, you're probably wondering, can technology help me or perhaps my loved one that has Alzheimer's increase my physical activity levels? Well, through my talk, I'm going to quickly review the current literature that's out there. I'm going to highlight our exciting research project. And again, come on upstairs to the GDH. You won't be disappointed to see the technology and the research happening in our beautiful new facility. And then I'm going to leave you with some tools for success moving forwards. So to start with, what population are we talking about? Dr. Knufel highlighted very, really well, really articulately, um, what dementia means. But specifically, this talk is going to focus on the main cause of dementia being Alzheimer's disease. Um, and it's slightly different than dementia. Think of Alzheimer's causing dementia symptoms. Dementia can come from different things. One of the things is Alzheimer's disease. And for the purpose of this talk, we're going to call that AD, Alzheimer's disease. Okay? Okay, so there's plenty of research out there. And a lot of the research dealing with this population is, uh, is, is kind of two-sided. The, the population is, is very diverse, and they're changing day to day. So to quickly go through the research, I got a photo of myself going through the research. I mean, with technology, of course. I was combing through the, the research, and we found that the ACSM guidelines, this is the American College for Sports Medicine, it's grounded in this research. It's so much so that individuals doing these literature reviews say it's this author's recommendations that exercise in the aging adult from the American College of Sports Medicine would be the most comprehensive. So my presentation is going to focus on the ACSM guidelines and just know that it is grounded in theoretical research. So the ACSM guidelines highlight three major considerations when encouraging exercise for individuals with AD. The first one, of course, I think we can all agree that we want to minimize the problems arising from the declining physical and mental health of the participant. Secondly, it's to recognize behavioral changes that may influence our ability to do exercise programs with this population. And finally, we're going to support the caregivers and your willingness to continue to bring your individual with Alzheimer's disease to the exercise program as the disease progresses. Now, technology fits nicely, and our research project fits nicely into this second one, recognizing behavioral changes and still trying to encourage exercise for this in these individuals. So again, Alzheimer's disease is progressive and neurodegenerative. So you can see a, a cartoon image of a healthy brain and advanced Alzheimer's disease. So you can see that it's going to be affecting a number of regions in the brain which are going to cause different things happening to that individual, including reduced mobility, agitation, depression. So you can see how all of these things would impact an individual's ability to maintain exercise and adhere to a program. So back to those major considerations. The first one was we want to minimize the problems arising from the declining physical and mental health of that participant. And the research shows us that the ADLs, as Dr. Knufo highlighted, are improved. The functional mobility of these individuals is maintained and improved through exercise to help them transfer in and out of bed, transfer off the toilet, or perhaps getting the food up to their mouth. And of course, this is highlighted in, in strong reviews of research. So if you're interested in digging into more, come see me afterwards and I can direct you to the appropriate resources. But to highlight that second one, this is the main meat and potatoes of our talk. We talked about, excuse me, the behavioral changes that cause the client to become agitated with an exercise program and maybe not adhere to the program. And so again, we go back to these, these impairments here and that agitation and cognitive judgment really impacting a trainer's ability to get somebody active. So the ACSM guidelines give us some tools to move forward. It's important that these exercise programs are available at various times throughout the day, maybe even only a 10-minute exercise bout. Of course, we think we can all agree that we want to have a low risk of injury. So you can see this individual here she does not need to transfer out of her wheelchair to become physically active. We want to emphasize enjoyment over the maintenance or the achievement of physical outcomes. And perhaps music can help these individuals. Music therapy is a big thing in dementia, mild cognitive impairments, as well as Alzheimer's disease. So adding light music to the, uh, to the exercise program, something that's meaningful to the participant, may increase their adherence to the program. And of course, they, we want to have simple, repetitive tasks over complex circuit-like programs. And this, when all taken together, is going to increase the adherence to exercise programs. So we as a research team got together and thought, what can we do that's going to take all these into account? And so what we did is we collaborated with West Park and Baycrest. Those are two health science research uh, facilities in the Toronto area that also have long-term care homes. We're on the left there is Briere. And we got funding through the Center of Aging and Brain Health Innovation. And we're partnering with a, a Norwegian company called Motitech. Now, Motitech is a fascinating company. We're lucky to collaborate with them. 
and they've created these beautiful videos in a system called MotiView. And again, this is actually upstairs, so we can come and try these, these um, images. So what they've done is they've taken a video camera and they've made sure that it's not moving around as they're either walking, cycling, or driving down beautiful scenery all around the world. MotiView has over 600 different videos. So if you want to go back to your hometown in France, Italy, Norway, or you want to take a trip to Singapore, MotiView can take you there. So we're going to be sitting on the bikes and watching these immersive, as Dr. Sheehy pointed out, videos that engage us and give us that feeling of moving down these beautiful sceneries. So it's connected through a beautiful laptop, touch screen laptop that's easy for clinicians to use, and it's connected to a nice big screen TV so that that individual feels immersed. So here's one of the images. Does anybody recognize this beautiful city? This would be our beautiful city of Ottawa. So we can take a bike tour right down the canal in a nice beautiful sunny day. And this is wonderful if Say, for example, you are an individual with AD on a secure unit in the middle of winter in Ottawa. To take a trip down the canal on a beautiful day, that's a nice vacation. So this, this technology has been used all across the Nordic countries. Now, don't judge by their face. I promise you they're having a good time. <laughs> this is done in, in Norway, as you can tell by the flags. And uh, they, they use this technology in almost all of the long-term, or excuse me, all the retirement homes uh, across these Nordic countries. So much so that they paired up with a, a world race called the Road Worlds, and they called it the Road Worlds for the Elderly, excuse me. They had over a thousand participants from Norway, Sweden, Denmark, and Germany, as well as a small part of Markham, Ontario in Canada. These 1,100 participants cycled 29,000 collectively, 29,600 kilometers in just six weeks. That's enough to go from St. John's to Vancouver. Now, before any of you East Coasters call me out on that, there is a little ferry ride in there. But they went St. John's to Vancouver and back again. And they did that twice. That's a lot of distance across Canada. So using MotiView, it's encouraged these individuals in retirement to cycle across Canada twice, collectively. That's an impressive improvement in physical activity outcomes. So we are very excited to put this um, MotiView solution into the Residence Saint-Louis in the secure units and non-secure units. And these will be done with individuals with Alzheimer's disease. We're really anticipating positive outcomes with the use of MotiView to encourage increased activity for this population, this meaningful activity, perhaps getting some smiles and some reminiscence from these individuals. So I want to leave you with the support of caregivers' willingness to continue back to that ACSM guidelines um, on how we encourage them to bring those individuals with AD to the exercise program. The best thing that I can come up for you is to get active together. Do it together, right? As Dr. Sheehy pointed out, it's never too late to get engaged in physical activity. You want to make it part of your lifestyle, and you want to make it meaningful to yourself, right? Now, you're probably wondering, how much is enough? How much do I need to get physically active? Now, I'm going to go against conventional rules, and I'm going to say, forget the guidelines, and I want you to find your start line. Find out what you're capable of. It may just be a walk around the block, and that's sufficient. That's great. Start there. Perhaps then you can go into a different terrain, a hike in the woods. If you're feeling ambitious, perhaps you can get on a bike again, go for a bike ride, right? Eventually, you can get the, the courage up and the abilities up to sign up for that distance race. It doesn't have to be far. and You don't have to run to compete. Just run to complete it. So I want you to enjoy that process. Whether you have Alzheimer's in the secure units or you're a healthy adult or perhaps with mild cognitive impairments, just enjoy the activity that you're doing. So perhaps it's a group exercise. You can hire a trainer. Again, if you hire that trainer, make sure they've got that certification to keep you safe. Maybe an accountability partner. And of course, integrate technology. Dr. Sheehy pointed out some beautiful technology that you can use to get physically active. Okay? Overall, I want you to set some goals, then track your progress, and celebrate those victories. But then you have to go back and set new goals. Okay? So here's some beautiful exercise programs in the Ottawa area. If you're interested in finding exercise programs that are suitable for you, or maybe you're an individual with, with Alzheimer's disease, excuse me, or mild cognitive impairment, the champlainhealthline.ca is a beautiful resource. The city of Ottawa has some good exercise programs that can be tailored to you. And if you're scribbling these down and I'm going too fast, just let me know and we can get it later. All right. But as always, I want you to consult your doctors. Right? Always stay safe when you're going to engage in physical activity, especially if you have those underlying medical complications. Keep safety in mind. And always consult your doctor. So, as we've kind of, all three of us have pointed out, technology 
and health go hand in hand. It's very exciting times to be an aging adult, if I can say so myself. Technology is becoming part of. <laughs> Technology is becoming part of our care, and as it should, but it's very important that we engage in research here. We are looking for individuals like you to help us find the answers, whether Whack-A-Mole is efficient for testing cognition, whether Motiview is good for increasing my physical activity. So it takes people like you to help us as researchers to advance science. So I'm glad you're here today. So, as always, I'll field some quick questions. I wanted to try and make this quick so we can get up to the GDH and see some of the, uh, the technology, as well as take a tour of the GDH. So I'd like to thank all the three speakers. This was great. And